My name is John Nussbaumer. I'm the Dean of the JD program here at Cooley Auburn Hills. And on behalf of uh, Cooley President Don LaDuke, our Board of Directors, and all our students, faculty, and staff at all four of our campuses, welcome to this wonderful event and thank you for joining us today. Through the wonders of modern technology, this is actually being broadcast to all of our other campuses. So I'd like to wish a special welcome to the uh, students, faculty, and staff at Grand Rapids, Lansing, and uh, Ann Arbor as well. I want to personally thank Justice Jubran and uh, the American Association of Jewish Lawyers and Jurists for bringing Justice Jubran to Metropolitan Detroit. And I'd like to especially thank Tim Atala, uh, one of our Cooley graduates, uh, Tom Cranmer, one of our board members, and the Miller Canfield Law Firm for making all of this possible and bringing this event to our campus. I also want to thank uh, 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 our Shari Lesnick, uh, Audra Foster, and uh, Brian Fagan and all of our operations crew for making all of this happen today. Let's give all of those folks I've thanked a round of applause. Uh, two procedural notes. If you've got a cell phone, please turn it off. And we do have a couple of judges in the audience who will confiscate your phones if they do go off. And uh, secondly, Justice Dubrown will take some questions after his, his presentation. Uh, and there are note cards and pens at the seats. And if you have a question, jot it down, pass it to one of the aisles, and we'll bring that up front and take care of it. Um, at Cooley, we believe strongly in the diversity of cultures and ideas that Justice Jubran represents, and that's why we're so very pleased that he's able to be with us here today. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Stephen Greenwald, the president of the American Association of Jewish Lawyers and Jurists, who will introduce Justice Jubran. Thank you, Dean. Um, Thank you, uh, everyone at Cooley Law School for making today possible. Uh, welcome to all of you. A particular thanks again to Tim Atala and Michael Trayson uh, from Miller Canfield and to the Miller Canfield firm. And Tim and Michael are both on our board of the AHLJ. Um, I'm very, we're very pleased to be here. This is the culmination, in a way, of, of a week-long visit by Justice Jubran to the United States. Uh, we've been in New York and in Washington and Chicago. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's fitting and, and, and good that we're here in Detroit for the, for the uh, wind up of this interesting visit. And I also want to thank Shari Lesnick, yes, for, and the Dean for, for organizing everything. So thank you very much. Um, I met Justice Jubran uh, several years ago on one of my visits to Israel. And my visit to the Supreme Court. Uh, I got to know him. Uh, I've got to uh, uh, spend time with him um, uh, socially and professionally. Uh, and I came to admire him as a, as a person and as a jurist uh, and as a lawyer. Um, and uh, the genesis of the idea for asking him to come here, as I mentioned earlier, really started here in Detroit when I met with a couple of young uh, Arab American law students uh, about a year and a half ago uh, and mentioned the fact that there was a, a member of the Supreme Court of Israel from the uh, Israeli Arab community, which was a fact that they were not aware of and quite taken aback uh, about that. And uh, that started me thinking about the fact that there isn't sufficient awareness, not just of that fact, but really about the complexity of Israeli society uh, um, in general. And uh, uh, also, having spent some time in Israel and getting to know people in the legal community there and on the courts, uh, I think that uh, I, I truly believe that Israel uh, represents uh, a great model in terms of the rule of law and the strength of the rule of law and the centrality of the rule of law in the Supreme Court in uh, Israeli democracy, uh, not just in the region, but really worldwide. So I, thought, I saw two opportunities in asking Justice Jubran to visit the United States. One was to uh, have a dialogue about uh, what he, in some sense, what he represents in terms of, of modern Israel and the, and the uh, diversity and complexity of the society there. And secondly, to talk about the rule of law and the judiciary in Israel. So I'm very pleased that he agreed to do that. And, 
uh, we've had a, a good week. Justice Jubran comes from a family uh, that has lived in uh, what is now Israel uh, for over 200 years. Um, he lives in Haifa, and he'll probably say a few words about that beautiful city. Uh, he attended uh, uh, Hebrew University Law School, graduated from the law faculty at Hebrew University. He then was in private practice in Haifa as a lawyer, criminal law, and general practice. He was then appointed uh, as a magistrate judge um, in Haifa, and after several years as a magistrate judge, he was elevated to the district court in Haifa, and he'll tell you a little bit about what those gradations mean. And then in 2004, Justice Gibran was named uh, to the Supreme Court of Israel, um, and he was and, uh, the first permanent member of the court from the Israeli Arab community, and it was a significant and signal, uh, singular, singular and significant event in uh, Israeli history. Uh, and uh, in one of the meetings we had, he was actually compared to <laughs> Justice Marshall, so uh, Thurgood Marshall, <laughs> and John Marshall. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, and in addition to uh, serving on the uh, courts and in the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Gibran has founded a number of organizations uh, that work toward uh, bridging, uh, the bridging the communities, the Jewish and Arab communities in Israel. Uh, he's received many awards for that, including the Lord Mark Seif Prize for advancing uh, relationships between uh, Jews and Arabs in Israel. He's uh, on the board of trustees of the University of Haifa, where he's also a lecturer uh, at the law school. Um, and with that, and without further ado, um, I introduced, proudly introduced Justice Salim Jubran. Good morning to everybody. Thank you, uh, Steve, for your nice introduction. And uh, thank you, I would like to thank the Dean faculty for this uh, kind hospitality and giving me this opportunity to uh, address you today in this very prestigious law school, which is the largest school in the country. I heard many things, many good things uh, about your school, and if a judge says that he heard many good things, it's good to hear it, because <laughs> I think, uh, you are doing a very good job, and um, it's an honor for me to uh, address you today. Well, I'll try to give you a, a brief overview about the judiciary in Israel, and uh, if there will be questions, I'll try to uh, answer. The origin of the uh, legal system in Israel uh, was uh, Ottoman uh, origin because the Ottomans uh, ruled uh, the country for uh, 400 years. And um, then there was the British mandate for 30 years. And since 1948, uh, we have our own laws enacted by the Israeli Knesset parliament. Uh, judges uh, in Israel are independent from any other authority or any other person. Independent in uh, the meaning of uh, appointing judges and uh, the material. Uh, appointing judges is a very unique uh, system in, uh, in our country. Judges are not elected. Uh, judges are appointed uh, upon the recommendation of uh, a special committee of nine members headed by the Minister of Justice and among its members another minister from the cabinet, two members of the Israeli Association Bar, and uh, two members of the parliament and three justices of the Supreme Court, including the president. While you may notice that five out of four members of this committee are not politicians. And this is, in our opinion, the right way to uh, appoint judges, not by politicians. Uh, 